Hello and welcome to our study of people in the Bible whose names do not appear here on the pages of our Bible. These people are important, but their names were not included, which tells me that what happened with them is more important than the name that they have. Really, when you think about your life and my life, our names are not important in, in what happens for God. What we do for God, what God does with us, is important. And today we're going to see a person just like that. You know, I was thinking as I was, as I was preparing for this, this teaching time with you, have you, ever, have you ever had a time in your life when you had a person you really wanted to thank and you just didn't know how to thank them? For, for me, both my father and my mother, both, while I was in college and preparing to go to college, still in high school, both my father and my mother both took second jobs. They already worked full time one job. They would finish that job and then they would come home and they would go to a second job. Why? Oh, because they wanted to become rich. No because their oldest child, their first son, was going to go to college. I was going to be the first person in our family to go to college. And so my father and mother saved and saved and saved and saved. And while I was in college, I worked myself. I worked the whole time. And everything that I earned, I gave toward my bill for college. My father and mother worked so much when I finished and graduated after senior finished, graduated with my degree, I finished, I had no debt. Why? Because father and mother both had worked so hard, you know, to help me. I, I had to work myself too, but my father and my mother both worked very, 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 very hard for me to be able to be without debt. I wanted to thank them. I thought about what do I do? Money is not good enough. Um, you know, I just thought about what could I do? And it's a hard thing. It's hard to think about what to do for such a, a, a special person. So uh, today's story is about that topic. How do you thank a person who you could never thank enough? It's a good question. We're going to talk about that today. But let's pray, and then we'll begin. Our Heavenly Father, today we ask for your help. We're going to open this Bible. It's precious. We love it. We're going to open it to study it because we want to know you better. Deaf people around this world, they want to know who is God and what is his plan for me. And today, the people who are here watching me, they want to know what is God's plan for my life. The hearing people the same. I, I want to know you better. And so today we open the Bible and we ask you through your Holy Spirit, you have promised us in the Bible that your Holy Spirit would guide us into all truth. And so we pray today as we study these verses and this story that you would help, help us to find all the truth that is here. Not so we can become smart, but so we can become more like Jesus Christ. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, if you have your Bible today, I'm going to ask you to open to the New Testament book of Mark. Mark and chapter 14. Today's story is actually included in all four Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All four have this story. And uh, we'll kind of we'll kind of compare through uh, this time of study, but I want to read for you the story in Mark chapter 14. So if you have your Bible, you want to open it there. <clears throat> We're going to see this story. It really I, I say this many many times, but one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Why? Because it touches my heart so deep. We're going to see a person. Today's story is about a woman. But it's also about a man. And it's also about a group of men. And so we're going to see some, some contrast 
between these three. And, and I want you to see the story with me today. Um, today, uh, the, the story that we're going to read uh, tells us, well, let's just read the story, all right? In Mark chapter 14, I'm going to begin, and, and I'll sign it for you, but I'm going to read verses 3 through 9. So Mark chapter 14, verse 3 through 9. The Bible says, it's speaking about Jesus Christ now. It says, and being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, or we would say today, perfume, that perfume of spinknard. It was very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. Verse 4. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? Why? Verse 5. For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they, those people, murmured against her, the woman. Verse 6. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? For she hath wrought a good work on me. Verse 7. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever you will, you may do good unto, uh, do them good. But me you have not always. Verse 8. She hath done what she could. She is come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. And verse 9. Verse 9. Verily, verily, I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this shall be, uh, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. So I want you to see, what do we learn from, from these verses? There's, there, again, this is in all four, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So we can, we're gonna compare a little bit, but we learn some things about this story. First, it happens in the town of Bethany. It happens in the home of a man named Simon, who before was a leper. But he's also explained to us, if you, if you read uh, in, other, in other of the, of not Mark, but in others, it says that he was a Pharisee, a Pharisee. I sign Pharisee. I invented this sign because it's connected with religion. He's a Pharisee. And so we know that this man, normally, normally, Pharisees did not like Jesus Christ. But I think as I read this, just short, and I'll talk about it more later, uh, this man was called a leper. You know, when a person had that disease, it was on their body and it would eat and eat and eat and fingers would fall off, and we've talked about it before. This man before had been a leper because if he was still a leper, no person could come to his house. He would be thought to be unclean and no person could have contact with him. So maybe Jesus healed this man before. That's what I think because the Pharisees had no relationship with Jesus Christ. This man, invited Jesus into his home and before he was a leper. So that's the first person that we meet in the story. The second, the second person we meet is the woman. We're going to put her here, the woman. She comes to meet Jesus Christ. I'm going to hold her for a little bit. We'll talk about her in just a little bit. But we've read the story. She takes a box and she, she breaks it. Now this is my wife's uh, box, so I, I cannot break it. And she pulls out of it a very expensive perfume, ointment, the Bible says. We're going to put that right here. 
she, she pulls this out. She breaks it and she pours it over the head of Jesus Christ. It says here in Mark. We're going to see a little bit deeper when we read in John. But we'll, we'll come to that in a little bit. But after she does this, uh, the disciples, the 12 people Jesus had chosen to be his followers. So we've got over here, we have Simon. Here we have the disciples, the 12 disciples. Over here is the woman. The 12 disciples, they watch the woman pour the ointment or the perfume over the head of Jesus Christ and they begin to complain. You would think they would be happy about it, but they complain. That was very expensive. This is expensive, and I'll explain how much in just a little bit. But in, instead of being happy for what the, the woman had done, it was nice, wonderful, beautiful uh, demonstration of love for Jesus Christ. They're not happy. They're complaining. They murmur. I want you to see now this third woman. Um, the, the Bible describes her. If, if we go to Luke's uh, book in, in Luke chapter 7 and verse 39, Luke does not give the woman a name. He just calls her, quote, a sinner. By the way, uh, it also says that in Matthew. She is a sinner. Her reputation was the opposite of the Pharisee. He was thought to be a respected, honored person. She was the opposite. He was at the top. She was at the bottom. The disciples were kind of in the middle. They were, they were normal people, but they were not thought to be phar Pharisees up here, but they were not thought to be sinners down here. And the description of this woman is that, that she was a sinner. We, we don't know how she earned that title, sinner. What we do know, uh, some people think, maybe she, she just had a bad reputation in, in her town. Uh, maybe her, what, what she did for her work was bad and people looked down on her. We don't know, and so I'm not going to say anything. We know one thing. The people in town knew her as a sinner. As a matter of fact, the Pharisee, Simon himself, when he saw what happened, in his mind, he thought, if Jesus knew who that was, he would not allow her to do that. What he was saying is, if Jesus Christ is the leader I thought he was supposed to be, he would not allow a woman with that reputation to touch him. And he kind of, he pumped himself up. So now what can we learn about these three? Here we have Simon. Here we have the 12 disciples. And here we have the woman called a sinner. Let's go back a little bit. Let's look at, let's, let's look at Simon over here. Simon is a Pharisee. He is also described as a person who was si Simon the leper, meaning before he had had the, the disease of leprosy, that, you know, it would, his body was falling apart. It was horrible. But now he's healed. Um, I think, as I said before, possibly Jesus healed him. And so he's, uh, he's invited Jesus to come to his house. He should have been very, very, very thankful for all that had been done for him to be healed of leprosy. However, he decides that he would rather judge the woman who came in than to be thankful to Jesus Christ. And so I want you to see what happens. He should have been grateful also but he chose something different. He chose himself. He looked at the woman. He looked at Jesus Christ and he said, if he knew who she was, he would never allow that to happen. And he judged the woman. He criticized the woman. Okay? Hold that thought. I'll come back. The second group here, the disciples, the 12 disciples. These men were chosen by Jesus Christ. And, and Jesus 
taught them. Those 12 disciples had watched Jesus Christ heal the blind and the deaf and the lame. And they'd even seen him raise up dead people. They had seen water become wine. They had seen many, many miracles. But they allowed themselves, now listen to me, they allowed themselves to be influenced by Judas Iscariot. If you were to read John, uh, his, his chapter about this story, which is in uh, John chapter 12, verses 2 through 8, John tells us that Judas Iscariot, let me spell it again, Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus Christ, yes, the, the one disciple who left, the eleven stayed stayed true, but the one he left and he betrayed, betrayed Jesus Christ. He speaks and he says, now by the way, you know that Judas Iscariot himself, he kept the money for the disciples. He's the one who said, that, that perfume is, is worth 300 pence. It could have been sold and given to poor people. He wasn't interested in giving it to poor people. He was greedy. He wanted it for himself. He wanted it to be in his, in his bag. He wanted. And he speaks. Now, we, we know now that Judas Iscariot is the person who betrayed Jesus Christ, but the other 11 disciples followed his negative comments. You know, it's important. I, I want to pause just for a little bit. You and I are going to meet people all the time who are ready to complain about everything. You will have a decision to make. Will I, follow, will I follow the person who complains and gossips? Or am I going to follow the person who lives right and does right and, and be faithful to that kind of a person? I don't know about you, but I don't want to follow the complainer and the gossiper. They're everywhere. You can find them in every church, in every family, in every, every business. Everywhere there's complainers and gossipers. I want to stay away from them. But the 11 disciples chose to follow the bad negative thinking of Judas Iscariot. And they complained. Now, I want to tell you, they had, the disciples had a lot to be thankful for as well. They had seen Jesus do wonderful things. I'm sure they had seen changes in their own personal lives because of being with Jesus Christ. But they chose to criticize the woman. Well, that brings us to the main person of the story, is this woman, a sinner. I love this story, and I'll tell you why. Because let's think about, over here, who was over here? Right, Simon, the Pharisee. Who is here? Right, the 12 disciples. Who is here? The woman. She, she is called, given the title, a, a sinner. But can I tell you that all of them were equal sinners? Simon, the Pharisee, was the same as a sinner as the woman. The 12 disciples who were following Jesus Christ had left their, their nets and everything to follow Jesus Christ were still sinners, the same as the woman. All of them, one person was not a sinner. Who? Christ. Jesus Christ in the room was not a sinner. When, you, when we read this story, we must understand where it fits in the life of Jesus Christ. This happens just before, just before Jesus will be crucified. It's going to soon happen that he'll be crucified. And this story happens just before it. All of them are thinking about themselves this woman is the only person in the room who thought about Jesus Christ. Now, let's, let's kind of examine her life. Uh, Luke tells us she is a sinner. And I want to tell you that uh, she's just the same as all those people. But by the way, this woman is the same as me. And she's the same as you. All of us are sinners. And so uh, this is the woman we see. 
I want you to see what uh, Paul, Paul wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. It's a wonderful verse. But here's what the Bible says. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Paul says Jesus Christ came into the world for one purpose. What? To save sinners. To save that woman. To save Simon. To save the 12 disciples. To save me. To save you. Jesus Christ came into the world, left heaven, perfect, pure, holy, righteous, beautiful, wonderful heaven. He left to come here to live in this stinking world filled with sin. Why? Because he came to save sinners. And Paul said, I am the worst. I'm the top sinner. I am the chiefest of sinners. The truth is, all of us are the same. I love, I love that verse. So we understand that all were in the same place. So why, why was this woman criticized? Why? Well, uh, here Luke tells us what happens. He told us that uh, she, uh, she came. Well, I want you to open your Bible to Luke chapter 7. Uh, Luke chapter 7. I want you to see just a few verses because... Um, Luke himself describes the woman um, more in more deeper detail than the others in some ways. But I want you to see how the woman came into the room. Mark just tells us she came in the room and, and she broke open the perfume there. But I want you to see, you'll see in Luke chapter 7, Luke chapter 7, I want you to see verse uh, 37. It says, And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus Christ sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. Verse 38. Now, I want you to see what happens with the woman. In verse 38, here's, it describes what she did for us. Verse 38. She stood at his feet. She did not come up by his head. She showed humility. She stayed near his, his feet. She stood at his feet behind him weeping. Not, no, weeping. She was weeping. And she began, now watch this, she began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. This is amazing. The woman comes into the room. She sees Jesus Christ and she begins to weep so much. She's standing near his feet. And his feet were dirty, I'm sure. They weren't clean. He, 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 would, be, he would have shoes. He would have sandals on. And there was dirt, dirt on the roads. And I'm sure his, his feet were dirty. And she begins to weep so much that her tears are falling onto the feet of Jesus Christ. And she begins to take her hair and wipe uh, Jesus' feet with her hair. And then she, she kisses his feet. And then she takes this expensive perfume and she begins to pour it on Jesus Christ. I want you, I want you to catch this. Paul in 1 Corinthians wrote just a simple phrase. He says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 15, But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. This woman was a sinner. The one thing she had that, that made her have any value was her long hair. She cried so much onto the feet of Jesus Christ. She could see 
her, her tears dropping and hitting, hitting his feet and making the dirt separate. And she saw that and she thought, oh, and, and she wept and she took her hair and she washed his feet, meaning that the dirt from his feet would then go onto her hair. She kissed his feet. This woman was so thankful for what Jesus had done for her. And we don't know what Jesus did for her, but she knew, and Jesus knew, that she could not stop weeping. And she took this expensive perfume and she, she broke the box and, and she took the perfume and she, she poured it. And, it. and as she, can you imagine in that room, as the woman poured the uh, perfume and, and anointed the feet and the head of Jesus Christ and it came down, that, by the way, the perfume was very expensive. Uh, I've studied and they tell me uh, w when uh, Judas Iscariot said it was worth 300 pence with one pence, you could buy one donkey. I did the math. I had to use a calculator, but I did the math. I found out that meant with that perfume, it was so expensive. The woman could have purchased 3,000 donkeys. That's a lot of money. She didn't even think about how much it was worth. She was so thankful to Jesus Christ for what he had done for her. She took this expensive perfume and she just poured it out. And as the disciples said, she wasted it. She wasted it. She could have sold that and given the money to poor people. But you'll notice in this room, Simon, the disciples, criticized and judged this woman. There was one person in the room that did not judge her. Who? Jesus Christ. He did not judge her. You will notice, if you go back to Mark chapter 14, go back to Mark chapter 14, there you're going to see what Jesus said about this woman. Oh, she's been called a sinner. Uh, they, they, they've criticized her. They've judged her. They've complained about her. She should have sold that and given it to the poor. And they, they were judgmental of her. But Jesus said about the woman, he said, she hath wrought a good work on me. That's in verse 6. While the disciples and Simon were complaining about her and judging her and criticizing her, Jesus Christ was praising her. He said, she has done a good work on me. By the way, in the book of Matthew, twice in chapter 25, there's a phrase that I want to hear. I hope you want to hear it also. It's short phrase. When I arrive in heaven, I want to hear from God, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Do you know what Jesus was saying to this woman? She has done a good work on me. Well done, good and faithful servant. She did the right thing. The disciples could have sacrificed something and, and, ex, and expressed their thanksgiving to Jesus Christ. Simon maybe was healed from leprosy. He could have expressed himself and, and found something to give as a sacrifice to Jesus Christ also. But they did not. She looked in her house. She heard Jesus is there in the home of Simon. I, I know where he lives. I can go in there. She looked around her house. What is my most valuable, expensive? Oh, I have this. I will take this. I will give it. She puts it in a box. She puts it under her arm and she hurries to the home of Simon. She arrives there. When she arrives, she's so overwhelmed with how much she thinks. She begins to weep. She washes the feet of Jesus with her hair and her tears. And she opens the box. She takes out the perfume. And she pours this perfume worth a lot of money. And it's wasted. The disciples criticize Simon judges. 
But Jesus says, she has done a good work on me. I want you to see in verse 8 of Mark chapter 14, in verse 8 it says that she had done what she could. She had done what she could. I want you to copy me. Sign it with me. Copy. Copy me. Come on. She had done what she could. Again, she had done what she could. Wow. Let me ask you a question. Have you done what you can? I think about myself. Have I done what I can? We, we may not have a lot of money. It's not about money. It's not about the value of the perfume. That, the value of that perfume, it really means nothing. Jesus said she looked around to find what she, what she could do, and she did all she could. I want you to think about this. Jesus Christ did not, did not expect this woman to do more, more than she could. He just wanted her to do what she could. Jesus is not expecting you to do more than you can, but he expects you to do what you can. He expects me to do what I can. I, don't, don't, ask me, don't, don't ask me to come to your house and fix your car. Mechanic, I'm not. Don't ask me to come and fix the electric in your home. I cannot. I'll blow up your home. I don't know how to do that, but I can. Listen, here I am today. I'm filming today teaching you why. Because over 30 years ago, Jesus Christ touched my heart that I need to learn sign language to be able to help deaf people know the Bible. I'm not the best sign person. My, my skills in signs are not the best. I know that. You could tell me all oh, my mistake you made today, and, and I get emails telling me mistakes I made. It's okay. I'm not perfect, but I promise you one thing. I just want to do what I can. I just want to do all I can. Why? Because I love him. He gave up so much for me, and I love him back. And I want to do all I can with all I have. God is not going to ask me to do something I cannot do, but he will ask me to do all I can do. And it's the same for you. There are, there are five things that I want to finish with. Application for us. Number one, every person in this story was a sinner, except for Jesus Christ. Some of them, Simon and the disciples, thought they were better. Why? Because Simon had position. He was a Pharisee. He was, he was respected. The disciples thought, well, well, we're better than her because we spent time with Jesus Christ. But all, one, two, and three, all, and you and I are sinners. That's first. Second, one of the people in the story, only one, offered a very, very expensive gift. Who? The sinner. She's the only person who offered the gift. The disciples offered nothing. Simon offered nothing. But the sinner offered everything she had. Number three, other people will criticize the one person who gave the offering. Simon gave nothing. Disciples gave nothing. But both of them decided they should criticize and complain and judge and gossip about the one person who gave. Now, I want to tell you today, you fit into one of these two. You're, if you're giving to God, you're this person. I promise you, you will be criticized. Some will criticize you. Why would you waste your money on that? Why do you give your tithe? Why do you give to missions? Why do you give so much money to the church? You'll get criticism for that. But Jesus Christ will say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. You see, the people who gave nothing criticized. The woman who gave everything criticized no one. Number four, Jesus praised the one and condemned the others who disagreed with him. 
He didn't, he didn't say with his voice, you all are hard. He didn't say that. But when he praised the woman, how do you think Simon felt? I think his heart was like, I am a Pharisee. I'm important. I have, she is a sinner. And his heart was all. And Jesus said, this woman has done what she could. <laughs> his heart went down. The disciples who were with him all the time. And now they joined with Judas Iscariot to criticize the woman. When Jesus said that phrase, she, she gave what she could. Their hearts must have sunk as well. Let me give you the fifth thing. You and I are one of these three. Some of us are proud of the position we have. Well, I am a deacon in the church, or, or I'm the pastor of, of the church, or, or I teach a deaf Sunday school class, or I'm, I am really skilled in sign language, and I am a certified interpreter, you know, whatever. We're, we're really proud of our position. Some of us think, well, well, I read my Bible every day, and I know more about the Bible than any other person in my deaf class. And we think, well, I spend time in the Bible, but the Bible never gets into us. We're like the disciples. And some of us are just like the sinner, the woman who knew who she was. By the way, I'm sure she had a bad reputation. But I'm thankful Jesus Christ came here to save sinners. And he came to save that woman. I want to leave you with this thought. I'm finished today. This woman is a wonderful, perfect example of what you and I need to be today. You know, Simon, if he was healed from his leprosy, from his sickness, had a lot to be thankful for. The disciples later would understand we, we need to be thankful. Jesus Christ came here and died the same death for all of us. Our sins are all the same. This woman was thankful because she knew how much she had been forgiven. They thought they were better and did not need the forgiveness. But all of us need the forgiveness. So when I ask you the question as I close, what do you have today that you could offer Jesus Christ? The woman, all she had was the perfume. That's all she had. But she offered what she had. You might have time. You might have money. You might have uh, abilities. You, you might have uh, opportunities to serve. Use your opportunities like the woman. She did what she could. And you and I need to do what we can. Heavenly Father, thank you for the time. Thank you for this woman in, in these verses. She's a real blessing to me and a real challenge to me, inspires me. Help me to copy her. Help me to be thankful today. I do thank you for coming here to die for me, for being buried and rising from the dead for me. I'm thankful to you. I love you. And I want to give you all of my life. And I pray for the folks who are watching today that they will want to surrender also. Right now, just pause and take time to surrender what you have to God today. Heavenly Father, we love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.